Okay, so uh, our first problem here, or next problem, is going to be uh, a beetle sits at the top of a 0.75 meter diameter wheel. Assuming the wheel turns counterclockwise, what is the angular displacement of the beetle before it is squashed under the wheel? Also, what arc length does it travel through? All right, so we've got ourselves uh, a wheel here. And we've got a little beetle sitting on top of this wheel. Okay, now this beetle, uh, how, where does it have to go in order for it to be squashed? On the bottom, on the bottom right? So it needs to travel through what degree? Okay, good. So we need to travel through 180 degrees if we're going to squash the beetle. All right, that's going to be important. The next thing here is that it says diameter, right? Anytime that you see diameter, I need you to change it to radius, okay? You need to resolve for whatever this would be um, as, a, as a radius. So how are you, how are you going to do that? Very good. So we're going to say uh, 0 0.75 meters divided by 2. And what are we going to come up with for our radius? Okay. Now, here's, a, here's another word. Angular displacement. What do you think that is? Very good. So what's the, what's the variable for that? Theta. Very good. Okay. So theta is one of the things we want to know. Remember, everything in this circular motion has a counterpart to linear motion, right? So in linear motion, displacement was like, you know, along the x-axis or the y-axis. But in circular motion, it's angular displacement, and that's going to be theta, all right? So theta, the angle through which you travel, that's your displacement, all right? Um, and then arc length, okay? What did we say represents arc length? What variable? S, very good. Okay, so arc length is S, and that's that linear distance around the circle that this beetle is going to have to travel uh, to get squashed, right? Okay, so. Uh, yes, it does. Good job. Good job. All right, so uh, let's see here. We just said that theta has to be 180 degrees, right? Okay, so let's. If we're going to be using our arc length formula, can we do that? Can we use 180 degrees? No, you have to use radians. Very good. That has to be in radians. Okay. So we're going to say 180 degrees over 1, and then we can say that 180 degrees equals how many radians? Pi. Pi radians. Very good. All right, so we're going to say that S, the arc length, is equal to, what's my radius? No, no. Good, 0.375 naked number, meters times pi radians. All right, so... <laughs> Type that into your calculators, and let's come up with the arc length, or in other words, the linear distance through which that beetle is going to travel. No, you don't have to. Mm -mm. Yes. All right, Sean. Shh. Hey, be quiet. Go ahead. Yes, please, Sigfigs. Mm. Very good. 1.2 meters. Where where did the radians go? I thought it was meters times radians. Where Where's the radians? Very good. Radians does not belong in the linear system, okay? And arc length, by definition, is the linear distance, okay? So radians goes away. It has no place in this answer, all right? So the arc length is 1.2 meters, all right? Now that other question was, what is the angular displacement of the beetle? We've already answered that. What is it? 180 degrees or pi radians, okay? All right. 
Yeah. Okay. Now, if I specifically ask, you know, like, what's the angular displacement in radians, or in, then you have to, you know, pick the right the one. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're gonna see uh, as soon as you switch his head, the Beatles switch, right? So.